What is up you guys? It's Tony Holiday, back at it again with another video in Logic 10.5. Today we're gonna be going over using the step sequencer. I wanna kind of do an in-depth tutorial for that. And I'm actually gonna make it a two-part series. So the first part is going to be just kind of drum hits and how you can use the step sequencer for things like that, making different drum patterns, making them intricate, making them not the same. And then part two of the video, what I'm gonna be doing is using the step sequencer as more for melodic instruments. So things like synths or bass, other things like that. They're very kind of similar in a way. You can overlap each of the functions, but some are specific to some functions such as the melodics, and then some are um, specific to more of like the drum side as well. But we're gonna be going over both of those in this two part series. Before we get started, you guys, please make sure to go follow me on all socials. That is Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's Tony Holiday. That being said, let's get straight into the video and I'm gonna show you how to use the step sequencer in this two part series for Logic Pro 10.5. Let's go. All right, you guys, you should be able to see Logic here. And what I have just started for us is a drum machine designer with a couple different drum hits underneath it. These are all from my new sound pack. And I know I keep saying it's coming out. I promise it's coming out. I've been back and forth with the designers for about a week now. And then my homie is actually going to help me film a video as well to kind of uh, promote it essentially and just show you guys what it's all about before you purchase it. I apologize for the delay. It will be out soon. I can't put a date on it it really depends on getting the artwork back but it will be out soon so please bear with me but thank you for being patient we have a clap hi-hat kick a perk and a snare we're just going to keep it simple we're going to make a quick little drum pattern using the step sequencer and i'm going to show you the different modes and also kind of just the uh, basic settings with the step sequencer to give you an idea of how it works so we'll right click this little region here which is our drum machine designer and we'll go create pattern region. And this pops up, which is the step sequencer that is brand new in 10.5. Couple different things to start off here. As you can see, we have all the drum hits listed there. If you don't know how to get your drum hits into here, I recommend you go watch my ultimate drum tutorial for Logic 10.5. I explain how to create a drum machine designer by dragging in samples. And you can also use the kits made by Logic here as well in the electronic drum kit or drum kit section. But we're gonna stick with the third party samples for today. I have my BPM at 150 to start. I'm going to actually take this and go from 16 steps to 32 steps just so it looks a bit bigger so we can kind of get a better idea of what we're doing. These kind of uh, little options here in the top right of the step sequencer, for example, this button here will stretch everything out so it just maximizes to the view that you have there of the step sequencer versus if you turn it off, we have all this blank space down here. I'm going to turn it on just so we can see better. And then what we can do with this one too is that's um, just kind of like a manual dial for that, but I'm gonna keep that on. This window here is gonna make it into two parts. So if you have something like long, that's like a 32 step, it'll split it into two parts so you can see all the different drum hits. I'm gonna keep it onto the wide one there. So we just have the whole uh, pattern. It just makes it easier for us to see the whole thing. So I'm just gonna make a little trap pattern and then I'll explain to you the different modes once I have that in there like this. So bear with me, I'm just gonna do this really quick. So we'll start with with a couple claps, do like a kick, perk will do like that. Just a standard little 150 BPM pattern. Now with hi-hats, what you love to do is to do like a little two-step pattern just like that. The thing that I liked about Ultra Beat that was nice, I do miss it for this reason, is you could just right click this and do add every um, downbeat or add every upbeat, which you can't do with the um, step sequencer here. It's kind of a silly feature that I think they should have added in there. Hopefully in the next update, we can get something like that. For now, I'll just draw in this little two-step pattern. And as you can hear as well, when I'm drawing those in, you're hearing the playback. That's gonna be this button here with the uh, green, if I turn it on. You can hear the playback. If I turn it off, you won't hear anything when I click those buttons in. I'm gonna leave it off for now, just for the sake of the my voice talking so you can make sure to hear me right. So now let's take a listen to this pattern with everything involved. super boring, but now I'm going to show you what we can do with the different modes involved to kind of make each of these 
uh, drum hits more interesting and we can make this pattern not quite so bland depending on how much you want to do to it. We've been working in this mode here, which is the step on off on the left side of these two options here. That is, it just allows you to click in notes where you want, and then they will play on the step sequencer. If we click over to this one here, which says velocity value, you'll see that the different rows, so if, for example, I'm on the clap murder here, there's these little numbers, which are like 100, and that actually signifies the velocity of each of these steps. So for example, maybe I want the first clap to be like 62 velocity versus 100. Now this is what that would sound like. As you can hear, that one's a little bit quieter than this one here is gonna be louder. I'm gonna keep it at 100, I wanna keep it consistent. So you can hold option and click that, and it will always go back to the default, which is 100 velocity. And if you move down the row here as well, you can see that the numbers appear for each of the rows when you move to it and are highlighted on it. You can also change that option as well by going into view, and you go to um, display edit mode values, and we'll go always for all rows. Now you can see all the numbers are available for each of the rows, doesn't matter which one we're highlighted on, but that's useful if you just wanna look at the whole project like that and get an idea where any of the modes and different details are at. For some use of the velocity, what I like to do is actually take my hi-hats and alternate them to kind of give it more of a realistic feel. So I'll drop every second one to around like between 75 and 85, and then that will just kind of have a hi-hat that's more high in velocity and then one that's lower. So that'll sound like this. Gives it more bounce, gives it more of a realistic feel. So after velocity value, we have gate. So for example, this one, the step rate is a 16th. If we take the gate and we bring it down to let's say 50%, this note is going to be 50% actually shorter than the other notes here. If that doesn't make sense, I'll show you in MIDI. So what we can do is actually go convert to MIDI region. And if I go in here and go on to the hi-hat, the first note here is the one that we had the gate on, is actually half the length of the next one here, which the gate's at 100. And I didn't touch any of these ones here, as you can see. I'm gonna, again gonna keep it at 100 for that, but that's just another one. So say if you have um, some kind of drum hit that's maybe a little bit too long and you don't wanna hear the whole thing, the gate is a great way for you to actually lower the length of it so it's a little tighter, if that makes sense. After gate, we have tie. Now this is actually more for things that are on the melodic side of instruments. So I'll get into that in that part two of it, uh, video of the step sequencer series. But basically just a little overview is what you can do is tie notes together so that they're longer. So you would use this for things like bass, maybe 808s, different synths if you wanted to make notes that were actually gonna be like if you're playing a piano chord because you can actually do that in the step sequencer. Um, note as well is going to be used for the melodic stuff, but I will touch base on the note one as well in the melodic part two of the step sequencer video. Octave, same kind of thing as notes. That's just gonna move everything up by 12 semitones at one time or down. So we'll again pass by that one. Loop, start, end. Now this one's pretty cool as well. So what you can do is actually change the uh, start or the end of the loop. If we play this, for example, maybe we don't want these last two kicks, so we'll shorten this by half. Now this whole um, region will just start over again as these ones play on. So I'll play this for you. you see that that one actually just started over as this one reached the halfway point. And you can make that as long or as short as you like, so you can make the start be from there. Now that doesn't sound very good because it's off time, but that's really a useful one if you do want to have maybe just short little patterns. For example, you can do your hi-hats. That's in time because it's still the four steps there. Um, it's just not playing the whole thing out. After loop start on, we have note repeat. And this is something that I use regularly. It's awesome for hi-hats, it's awesome for snare rolls. We have all these ones underneath each of the um, elements there. Now what we can do is we can actually just drag it up all the way to 16, so between one and 16, and it will repeat that many notes in the same length uh, of time there. So for example, rather than playing the one note that we had, we can put four in there and it'll sound like this. Obviously super cool for doing hi-hat rolls. I use that one and the velocity probably the most when I'm using the step sequencer. This one is very interesting to me, Chance, 
And this is where you can actually start making your step sequencer drum patterns a little more realistic and just different variables so you can keep people interested in. So for example, maybe I don't want this hi-hat pattern to be every single time on the two-step. I can change the uh, chance by clicking and holding down all the way from 1% to 100, and it will actually change the percent of the uh, time that it will hit. So 50%, it's only gonna hit this note 50% of the time every single time this sequencer runs. So check this out. See how the two that we just played were totally different from each other? And it was based on these uh, five notes here. They either played or they didn't based on their percentage of chance. So that way you could have all these like that. You could play this pattern probably 20 different times and it's not gonna play the same one twice. After chance, we're gonna go to start offset. And this one essentially will take the beginning of the MIDI note and it will um, either start it before the step or a little bit after, again, depending on how much of a percentage you have set here. So for example, I'm gonna use the hi-hats again. If we wanna keep them a bit off time, let's just drastically do it. So we'll make it 14% for all of these. And to mention as well, these little arrows on the side will affect the parameter um, using the mode to all of them. Rather than doing each and every one, we can just use these buttons and it will change each piece. If we bring this to MIDI, I can show you the actual starting point of the hi-hat. As you can see, if this is the beginning of the step there, we've brought it in 17% um, of the step to kind of give it a bit more swing there. So it's not exactly right on time. Again, it gives it more of like a realistic feel. So back to the step sequencer now, I don't want it to be that much. I'll maybe do like, 8% or 7%. And while I said these notes here will bring all the different parameters either up or down, these ones will move the step sequencer over by one step. You can press that over. Every note just moved over one step. And you can also do it for any of these. So if the clap wants to be moved like that, or maybe the perk, you wanna move it to like there. That's what those buttons do effectively as well. The step rate. Now this is where you can actually change the step rate of each note in the step sequencer. I haven't used this one too much. I can see how it could be effective for maybe more melodic instruments. I haven't used it with drums. And the last one in the modes here you guys we have is skip. Now what skip will do is it will actually skip the note that you press in and it will act as if they're not even there. So rather than just play over it and it would be as if you turn them off, it keeps them on but it will just skip all these and jump right to the next one. So watch this little white square as I play this versus the other white squares, which will be in time. And this one will skip right over this and start on this one here while these ones are still in this area back here. So I'll play this. See how it skipped it completely? Again, another cool parameter that you can use if maybe you're just creating different patterns and stuff. I don't use it that much, however, these are all tools that can be used kind of in tandem and make something very cool. I'm gonna go back to step on off, and now I'm just gonna kind of finish off by going through a little bit of the more back end stuff of the step sequencer. Each of these rows here has their own set of parameters as well. So for example, we can change the step rate. We can actually change how we want it to go through the step sequencer. So for this one, let's say we wanna go backwards. You'll see it begin from back here while all these ones start at the beginning see that. We can also do um, there and back. See how it's went to the end and then all the way back. And one of my favorites is really this random one, which if you watch the step sequencer, it'll just be all over the place, different notes at different times. So that's pretty cool. Um, and when you do that inside the actual back end here, if you do the random mode and watch this, it'll just be really random and cool. Make some incredibly cool arpeggios, you know, very fortet kind of style stuff if you do that mode right there. We can also solo different rows, mute them as you can tell what I've been doing so far with this. We also have kind of the master one here where you can move each of the notes or um, change it um, that way. Now let's go into the kind of back end a little bit more here. So what we can do is click this I to go into the inspector. And that allows us to see the pattern, the row, and the step kind of details here as to what we wanna do if we wanna change how the step sequencer works. Obviously pattern will affect the whole thing. 
row will do per kind of row here. So clap, hi-hat, kick, etc. And step will do each specific step. So as you can see, if I click that, it will be um, uh, specific to each of those. So in your step, obviously you can change the note. I won't do that because that's more for melodic type things. Velocity, gate, note, repeat, chance. These are basically the de same details that we would have in here. Um, it's just more so you can see it in a drop down format like that. The rows, um, we can change the different assignment here if there was an open one. The step rate, again, the playback mode like I was talking about, and as you can see, it changes here as well. The loop start or loop end, which is just another way for you to actually affect uh, this part here. So let's say we wanted to start it back there. You can see it changes like that as well. So really these are actually more laid out ways for you to actually use the different modes up here. I prefer to use this method using this dropdown. It's more visual, which I think works better for me personally. Everybody's different, but that's kind of what this section is here. The pattern's really cool though as well because of this function here, which is the pattern key. Now, again, this is not really so much for drum hits. It's more for the melodic side, but what you can actually do is set the key and you can quantize to, um, certain scales or modes and then it gives you tons of options. You'll always be in that key or mode and actually be able to make really cool different um, step sequenced melodic instruments. Again, part two of the video, come back for that. I will go over that a little more. So we can close the inspector. And the last thing that I wanna go over here, guys, is just this one to the left of the inspector here. And this is actually gonna be kind of like your pattern library. So as you can see, I made this little pattern at the beginning of this tutorial. So what we can do here, you guys, is we can go to this little um, gear icon here when you're in the browser. You can go save pattern or save template. If it's gonna be the same drums every time that maybe you're using or the same kind of pattern, what I like to do as well is if I have a pattern that I really like that I know goes with a lot of different things and a lot of different BPMs, I'll just save the pattern and then anytime I open up a sample in a uh, 150 BPM or something like that, throw the drums on top, see how it sounds, maybe tweak a few things rather than starting from scratch. So that's gonna be in the user patterns. Those will appear here for the patterns and the templates. The patterns here, they actually, Logic has given us some um, stock patterns. We have different drums here. I won't change these because as you can see, for example, if I go lightly swung, these are gonna be different um, notes rather than what I've actually put down because I haven't followed what's called the GM drum MIDI map. So as you can see, C1 says kick here. Well, I actually put a clap there. C sharp one is a rim, is a hi-hat. So if you actually follow those, that's the same way that Logic has set their kits up in this section here. So you can just flip between kits if you get in the habit of doing that, which again, really cool way to experience a good workflow. You can change lots of different things. I'm gonna change it back to what we had with just our pattern with the third party samples. But yeah guys, with that being said, Thank you so much for watching. This is part one of a two part series for the step sequencer where I'm going over the drum hits and the next one will be on more melodic instruments using the step sequencer and that will be out tomorrow. So stay tuned and come back for that. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure to hit subscribe. Make sure to follow me on all socials as well. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's Tony Holiday. I will see you tomorrow guys for part two of the step sequencer series in Logic 10.5. Take care. Cheers.